Welcome to Fabulous Feast. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio and this is my kitchen. Fabulous Feast is all about empowering you to make good food choices. Food choices that are going to help you stay healthy, to invest in that health currency we call it, your personal uh, 401k of health. It's also about exposing you to different flavor palettes because if you learn different foods that taste a little bit differently, you may not miss some of those foods that aren't good for you that you yearn for. So we're going to create new flavor memories and we're really going to focus in on the value of food. Hippocrates said it many thousands of years ago, let food be thy medicine. That's right what you eat can significantly impact your health. It'll reduce your risk for chronic low-grade inflammation, diseases like high blood pressure, hardening of the arteries, even cancer can get reduced by reducing your amount of inflammation in your body. So that's what the show is all about. Foods that are going to heal if you're sick and foods that are going to keep you healthy if you want to stay that way. Today's show is going to be coconut salmon. So we're going to talk a lot about salmon and we're going to pair it with a nice green salad as well as with some asparagus with a mango and pineapple salsa. So first of all, let's look at salmon. Salmon is a very healthy fish. Why? We know that it's got those good fats, those omega-3 fatty acids your cold water fishes, salmon, mackerel, char, cod, sardines, those are all really good for you because they're high in omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids come from green vegetation. Look at our table, lots of green vegetation, all right? But in vegetation in general, also suppressing inflammation, creating an anti-inflammatory cascade. When we talk about that omega-3 ratio, we compare it to omega-6s. Omega-6 fats are also essential fatty acids, meaning our body doesn't make them, they're essential. We have to consume them. Those fats come from grains. They come from fried foods. They come from when you, when you hydrogenate an oil or corn oil or soybean oil or seed oils. Arachidonic acid is an omega-6. It's found in grains and all those other oils I just mentioned. Omega-6 fatty acids increase inflammation. They drive inflammation. They make you pro-inflamed. Well, well, what does that mean? Well, it means you're going to be more at risk for itis zoonosis, arthritis, diverticulitis, diverticulosis, neuritis, any itis cirrhosis. It's been related to metabolic syndrome, which is inability to maintain your blood sugar, central obesity. It's been related to brain health. When your brain gets inflamed, you get Alzheimer's. Yeah, they're called AGEs, and age activated glycolated end products. I'm not gonna go into the biochemistry, but those AGEs, when they bind to your brain, proteins in your brain, that tissues of your brain, it leads to Alzheimer's. So that's why it's so important to eat lots of omega-3s. You want to have a ratio of at least three to four omega-3s to one of omega-6s, which is the way um, our body is designed to live. If you can get it lower, one to one, even better. The average American diet has a ratio of 25, 26, 30 to one omega-6 to omega-1s. That's why we're so inflamed. So going back to, to salmon, this is a beautiful piece of salmon. This is wild caught and it is Pacific uh, sockeye salmon. You can tell by the color. Now, uh, wild caught, now this is Pacific. I live in New Jersey. This is not fresh, fresh. This is frozen. Okay, it's previously frozen. Even if it says fresh, they have to bring the temperature of the fish down to just about freezing, if not freezing, on the boat. Otherwise, it's going to spoil. They don't go out for a day like when I go fishing. They go out for like a week or however long it takes till the boat's full. Then they come home. They have to keep the fresh, they have to keep the fish fresh. So what do they do? 
they put it in a really cold place. They put it on ice or they just freeze it. Not all the way through, but they freeze it. So anyway, even though it says fresh, unless it was just caught by your local fishmonger it was, uh, or fisherman, it was just probably um, uh, previously frozen. Um, your best f uh, salmons in terms of your omega-3 fatty acid ratio is going to be your Pacific salmon, your coho, um, uh, your Alaskan are really the best and it's reflected in the price. The Pacific is a little less expensive but also very good. Um, and it gives you, a, you know, all those omega-3s we're talking about. Uh, you, can, you can see it's a beautiful filet. Now, what about farm-raised? Well, we're going to talk about the difference between farm-raised and wild-caught in a moment. There's good pros and cons on both. However, Atlantic salmon is all farm-raised. There is no wild-caught Atlantic salmon in the market anymore. It's just been overfished. So any Atlantic salmon you see is farm-raised. So let's get this started because this has to get in the oven. So uh, I have my salmon, and I'm going to put on top of it about a tablespoon of coconut oil. That's right, coconut oil. About a tablespoon of coconut oil, and we're just going to spread it right over the salmon. And we're going to talk about why I'm using coconut oil in a moment. Um, so you just spread it over, about, again, just about a tablespoon. So we're getting a lot of fat in this dish, but they're essential fatty acids. They're fatty acids that your body doesn't make uh, because we need to get them into our body. And this is a really nice flavor pairing. Now, you can see the coconut oil is getting hard as I put it on the salmon. And people are going to say, oh, that's a saturated fatty acid, and that's going to, uh, you know, it's solid at room temper, it's bad for you. No, coconut oil is really good for you. Coconut oil is high in MCTs, median chain triglycerides, and also it is um, good for brain health. It helps you lose weight, a lot of people. Intermittent fasters, break your intermittent fast with a teaspoon of coconut oil. It goes right into the liver, gets metabolized quickly, and then it helps set your blood sugar for the rest of the day. Coconut oil is a keeper, and it's also great for your skin. But on top of this, we're going to make a pineapple, red onion, and coconut dressing. So I'm going to take some crushed, uh, fresh pineapple. Now, you can use canned, okay? Um, but I went and bought a, a cored pineapple, and... Uh, chopped it up because I wanted to go with fresh was available, but you can use the chopped canned. Just make sure there's no extra salt in it, or sugar rather, okay? So some pineapple and red pepper. So I would say it's about a uh, half cup of pineapple. You want the juice and maybe just a quarter of a red pepper that's chopped up, all right? That gives it nice flavor. That just goes right in on top of the salmon. So as I was saying about the salmon, um, farm-raised will, they can control what they feed it. So if they feed it good things, it's going to be good salmon. You are what you eat eats. So if it's organic farm-raised, you would like to hope they're feeding it organic, high-quality fruits and vegetable, uh, veg, uh, grains and fish food. Um, the good news is, is that Although farm-raised salmon seems to be higher in PCBs, yeah, those uh, uh, toxins, those carcinogens are more prevalent in farm-raised because of the fish food they're given, especially if they're farm-raised in countries like uh, Chile and in countries in Mexico uh, that don't really control, or China that really don't control what they feed the food. That's where you got to be careful. But it is higher in PCBs. The good news is, is their ratio of omega-3 fatty acids to omega-6 is only about uh, of 3 to 4 to 1, as opposed to the um, uh, wild-caught, which is a lot lower. Okay, it's like uh, 1 to 2, 1 to 1, 1 to 2. So you are getting some omega-6s, but the overall ratio of 1 to 3 in farm-raised is still okay, it's still preferable, still better than the American diet. So we have that there. Now we're going to put some coconut and I'm going to give you a, a pop-up quiz question. Do you think this is uh, shredded coconut that's sweetened or unsweetened? 
it's going to be unsweetened. Why? We don't want that extra fructose, that extra high corn syrup in here. So get unsweetened coconut. If you can't find unsweetened coconut, well, then I guess you can use the sweetened, but use it sparingly. Again, coconut's good for you. It's a good fat. Those MCTs are good. If you can't find shredded unsweetened coconut, look for coconut chips and just put them in your food processor or your uh, blender, Nutribullet, whatever. Okay, a little bit of coconut over the top. And it needs a touch of water because we want the fish to stay moist. Maybe a couple of tablespoons of water just to stay moist. We're gonna cover this with aluminum foil, put it into the oven and then cook it at 350 degrees, about 20 minutes. Doesn't take long at all. The, uh, depending on your oven and where you place the fish, the coconut may toast, it may not. I like it toasty, so when I take the lid off, if it's not toasted, then I put it up under the broiler just for a minute or two. Keep an eye on it, because otherwise it'll, it'll burn. Toast up the coconut, and then it's done. Piece of aluminum over the top. Salmon's in the oven. Let's look at our next dish. It's going to be a uh, asparagus, really simple asparagus that are gonna pair with the salmon. So what I have right here is my pasta pot. So I can make my pasta right in here and just drain it. But guess what? I didn't use it for pasta today. I used it to steam my asparagus because I just wanted steamed asparagus. So I have those here. And we're going to take out the steamed asparagus. And I'm just going to plate them right here. Great. So steamed asparagus could use a little bit of punch, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a nice little salsa for them. Some fresh mango. Equal parts, fresh mango with fresh pineapple and some cilantro and a little bit of lime. Now this little bit of a relish really does need to sit. Um, you can make it uh, right away, but it's best if this sits overnight. So there we would go. And the cilantro is right in through here. Grab a few sprigs of cilantro. Cilantro is also very good for detoxification, uh, especially for people that have heavy metal burden. So if you've been exposed to heavy metals, if you have a lot of mercury in your teeth still, or if you had your mercury amalgams removed and you're concerned there's mercury still in your system, cilantro is a great way to get that out. Parsley and cilantro both work that way. Again, and they're green. So a little bit of cilantro. Just chop that up real quick. So we have our salmon in the oven. We have it cooking. And the coconut, again, is a really high quality fat. Good for your brain, uh, good for your heart health. But when you m eat coconut and good fats with simple sugars, with white sugar, white flour, foods that have a high glycemic index, white potatoes, okay? Then those fats get activated. They become pro-inflamed. And then they're not so good to have around. So when people say, oh, those fats are bad for you, it's, well, it's not those fats. It's the white sugar. It's the white flour. And that's why we don't have a lot of recipes that are going to be, oh, reworking your your favorite recipes is home, I want you to embrace new recipes. Recipes that are gonna be anti-inflammatory, that are gonna help you uh, stay well and it, it get well uh, if you're not there and be healthy. So, a little bit of lime juice. Oh, maybe the juice for half a lime. And again, this needs to set. Uh, overnight was ideal, a couple hours at least, but the flavors really uh, come out if you let it set. Um, so 
Here it is. I already prepped it yesterday because, again, I want the taste to be just perfect for everybody. Asparagus, trimmed off the edges, just steamed, so they're not too fancy. But we're just going to put a little bit of relish on them like that. And boy, is that money. That's money. Now we're getting some tartness from the uh, mango and the pineapple salsa relish. And on top of that, we uh, have the uh, asparagus, which is somewhat neutral in flavor, but that'll pair nicely with all of the sweetness coming out of the salmon when it comes out of the oven. But th we're not done yet. We're not done. We need more vegetation. Five to seven servings of vegetation a day. So this dish is going to be really, really excellent when it's complete, but it's not complete yet. I need my salad. So today's salad is going to be romaine lettuce. Real simple. Now look, guys, iceberg lettuce, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Not only is it zero nutrient value, it actually impacts a part of your body called your ileocecal valve, which is the junction point between your large intestine and your small intestine. So people who are having digestive issues, you know, talk to us about it. We can check to see if your ileocecal valve is dysfunctional with some simple manipulative maneuvers. And then stay off the iceberg lettuce. Just, just it's not a good choice. There's lots of different lettuces. Today I chose romaine. But go out there, try bib lettuce. Try hydroponic uh, red leaf lettuce. Try escarole. Try the tops of your beets as your lettuce. Make different choices. And you may find something that you really enjoy. So, romaine. I don't have three colors. I want three colors in my salad. So, I'm going to add some sliced red cabbage. Uh, real high in polyphenols. There was a recent article uh, published about how you can boost your immune system and fight off uh, any virus and any, uh, you know, just boost your immune system. Foods that are highly covered, that are high in phenols, like red cabbage, uh, like oregano, like rosemary, uh, like blueberries, um, are all really, really good for that. They're called anthocyanidins. So you look for foods that are high in anthocyanidins. Red uh, grapes, grape seed extract. They used to call that the French paradox. Why French people, when they drink red wine, uh, have a lower incidence of heart disease. It's high in those polyphenols, those phenols. So I got two colors. Let's see, what else can I put in here? Well, guess what? To feed that little bit of sweetness I like, I'm going to add a couple of strawberries. Okay, why not? Nothing wrong with a strawberry in your salad. Um, can you put a little bit of goat cheese in here too if you wanted? Why not? A little bit. All right. Uh, and goat cheese is very easy to absorb uh, as opposed to uh, cow's milk. So uh, feta cheese is also easier to digest. So I can get a little bit of color and I can also get a little bit of sweetness in my salad. And uh, where's my ro rosemary? I don't have my rosemary on the table, but instead of rosemary, guess what? I'm going to use fennel. Nothing wrong with using fennel, okay? So not only will it add a nice little flavor kick, it'll also give me some more greens and a different color. Fennel's also really good for digestion, okay? It helps to stimulate digestion. So it's a great choice. So um, the tops can be a little tough. So we generally don't eat the tops. Um, the little bit of sprigs, those are really good for flavoring and seasoning. So you may want to save them. But just a few slices of fennel. If you like it sliced, I'm slicing it tonight because my red cabbage was sliced. So it's all going to be about the same size and texture of pieces but if you chop your red cabbage then I would recommend you chop your your fennel and there you go a wonderful salad all right so we're gonna have our salad we're gonna have our asparagus with our mango pineapple salsa and let's go check in on the salmon it should be just about ready and then I'll show you how this all plates up 
And then more importantly, I'm going to show you how you can take your extra fennel and your red cabbage and your lettuce and maybe you'll see I made a really big piece of salmon. That piece of salmon uh, for two people could get two meals probably out of it. So I'm going to show you how you can meal prep that salmon so you can have something for when you come home later on during the week or to bring to uh, work with you for lunch or guess what? You can even have it for breakfast. There's nothing wrong with having dinner for breakfast. So let's check on the salmon. It should be all done. I'm going to plate it up, clean up, and we'll show you the final presentation. And we're going to go over meal prep for the week. There it is. Coconut pineapple salmon. Wild caught sockeye. Uh, lots of good fats. Lots of fresh pineapple and a little bit of red pepper. And again, I like a little bit of extra toast on the coconut, so I put it back under the broiler. So now I can take this. Now I left the skin on, on this salmon. Uh, I recommend you leave the skin on when you cook it, but then when you serve it, that's when you can take it off. So let's see here. Let's break this off here, cut it through. See how it just flakes? Oh, you need that little bit of moisture in there to keep it from uh, drying out. Just scoot away, there's the, the skin. Pick it up. That goes right there. If you want a little bit extra of the, that goes here, right on top. All right. Great. And our salad. That comes in the front again with our wonderful colors, a little olive oil extra virgin or regular depending if you like the taste of the extra virgin go with that and then some balsamic vinegar i like a simple salad with this because there's so many other flavors going on uh, i just put some fresh black pepper on it guess what why is flesh black pepper so sharp why does it have such a bite to it it's high in phenols we talked about phenols gang all right, so phenols are just really good antioxidant. So if you can use it as much as possible, use it as much as possible. So there's your salad with your little sweet treat and your strawberries and bingo. Now that's dinner with your salad with your asparagus, with your mango pineapple salsa, and your coconut salmon. A great treat. While you're looking at that, I'll put it right in the front. You can have a couple strawberries, but let's talk about meal prep. Because so many people are working uh, late and have both members of the family working, their kids are homeschooling, and there's not a lot of time, so you meal prep. There's plenty of fish here for three servings. So I'm gonna take my glass serving, and let's have some fun. I definitely want salmon. Um, I could use my leftover salad uh, if I don't finish it tonight, um, or I could add uh, uh, whatever else we have around the house, but I think I'll start with my leftover asparagus. So in here, I have the leftover asparagus. Let's move this off to the side because asparagus, I love them, but I don't want to have to deal with cutting them up tomorrow at the office, all right? You kind of want to eat on the go, sort of. So uh, basically you got to, the little bit of meal prep is to slice them up. Now these are just steamed. So the flavor palette is very neutral. I can add some balsamic vinegar, um, or I can just put my leftover mango salsa on it as I want. But I'm gonna go with a bed of lettuce. All right, I'm gonna grab, so I have some red leaf lettuce here, but we had romaine, so um, that uh, was from the salad from dinner tonight. But uh, I like a bed of lettuce. Gently tear the lettuce. I'm gonna put the asparagus on next. And then I'll put the flaked 
salmon on top of it because then everything's in the right side. So this gets scooped up right on top. So all I need is a fork tomorrow. Another piece of salmon. Slide it off. I'm going to tilt it. Actually, I'm just going to let you see. You see, I got the skin off right there. Skin comes off. Put it on the top. And just break it up. So all you need is a fork to eat it, but you got to get all. See here, I want to get all the flavoring from the pineapple. And a little acid on this could be leftover lime juice. But since I have some leftover salsa, that's what I'm going to use for a dressing. Because I want a little more moisture. But again, whatever you want to add. All right. Here's your meal prep idea. Is that the only way to meal prep? No. You could just have salmon. You can put it on a wrap and make a salmon wrap out of it. There's lots of things you can do. That's dinner. That's lunch. That's even breakfast. We talked about it. So I really want to thank you for tuning in to Fabulous Feast. Fabulous Feast is about thinking of our food as a drug, as so to speak, as medicine to help you stay healthy, to invest in your personal health 401k. Because what's most important, it's not what you have in the bank, it's what you got in here. You want to be able to live with fatality with, and, and do all the things that God made us able to do. And that means exercise is part of it. That means eating right, drinking healthy things like low salt V8, all right? Excellent choice for heart health. Make sure you take your adjustments. Work on tall, strong posture. Breathe properly. Get enough sleep. These are all things that you need to do that are going to complement the fabulous feast that you have every day to feed your body for longevity, for health, and just be a better you. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Fabulous Foods. And I want to remind you the real incentive of this program is to empower you to make better food choices, which are better health choices. You can make health choices for yourself about your food, about your exercise, about making sure you get quality sleep, about making sure you're mentally refreshed and spiritually recharged. And also remember, your nervous system controls all the other systems in your body. That's where chiropractic adjustments fit into the picture. We stimulate your nerves to restore homeostasis. And it's not what we treat, it's how we treat. Without drugs, without surgery, with lifestyle. All the things we talk about in Fabulous Foods. So stay tuned. Learn a little bit more about diet, rest, exercise, chiropractic adjustments, and spiritual and mental well-being so you can live your life to the fullest. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio.